You guys, we've got the wonderful Amy Poehler, uh, who we've mm-hmm. been uh, talking about using on here for a long time because she's so great and she's such a part of comedy, obviously SNL, but just comedy in general. I think she's as good as anybody uh, sketch player in the last, I'm going to say 70 years. She's up there with anybody. <laughs> That's a wide net. Men and good women. Job. I don't want to go Lucille Ball, Carol Burnett, Gilda Radner, but I can also go Sid Caesar, Peter Sellers. She's very talented. She writes, she directs, she sings, and, so, and she's a heck of a nice person. She so. has a new podcast, and uh, she's going to talk about that. We're going to talk about her tour with Tina Fey. We won't uh, talk as much about her unbelievably uh, funny movies and TV shows because of the SAG strike, Mm -hmm. which is happening as we speak. Um, We can't mention that. So if don't get mad at us, we love to hear about that stuff. No offense or nothing, but you just mentioned it. I know I can just mention it, but that's it. You can mention that you're not supposed to mention. I didn't say which things though. I don't think we can say what they are. Oh, certain things we can't mention. I can say the word TV. That's all I can say. Okay. I could say something like I went bowling and I got a strike. Uh, I, wouldn't. Okay? I wouldn't. I eh. wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, I don't want any trouble. <laughs> it's a game show. <laughs> That's really, you? you're walking a thin line. There's our game show. Can you say it or not? <laughs> <laughs> What's going to get you canceled? <laughs> that should be no, one. No, the, the contestants are already canceled and they have to fight their way out of being Oh, canceled. that's good. That is a good game show. Uncanceled. No, that's but a- a- Amy Poehler is, uh, I'm going to say it, 1940 style. She's a kick in the pants. Real She's kick in the pants. She's a natural performer. She's great in movies, great film actor. Mm-hmm. I don't know. She may be one of those, I might have to say, hmm, what can't she do? Uh, that's very true. We'll find out. I know what we can't say. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. But we could say Amy Poehler, thank goodness. Yeah. That's not outlawed. All right, here she is, guys. Amy Poehler. Hi, guys. Hello. Can you, can you hear me okay? We can hear you and see you. <laughs> I, I love your glasses. Oh, Look at thanks. those are cool, yeah. They're kind of 60s or something, something hip. Yeah, I get them off at, um, Amazon. Mm-hmm. Because now I gotta, I gotta use my reader, my readers, my cheaters. Got your cheaters. Give me them cheaters. Look at Dana. Watch him go. Would this, Whoa! Would this change the vibe of the interview? Yeah. It hey. makes you. It makes you feel more like conservative. Like you're gonna drop some politics. Yeah. <laughs> really, sunglasses? Well, yeah. yeah. Interesting. Hmm. Would you agree, David? <laughs> yeah, I, I think like- I think there's a vibe. Are you guys over. forming an alliance? Yeah, I mean- we are. <laughs> It's a little early, but I get it. You overlapped or did you overlap? I wish. I wish. No. I mean, but David hosted. Oh, yeah, that's right. Wait, can we we can talk about SNL, right? Yeah, yeah, because we're not. Okay, it's good. already been on. Um, but Amy okay, did a funny one. I just thought of this, Amy. <laughs> were you, oh, you were my stunt double. Yes, we did a sketch where I played David's stunt double because we could probably be brother and sister. Like we have <laughs> so similar funny. features. So I played your stunt double, um, and then that's all I remember of the of the premise. <laughs> no, the, I think it was someone played the Rock, and I was like the Rock's buddy in a buddy comedy. And then when we got to like climbing on a building, they brought in Chris, and I think Chris, and that was you, which I thought would be a boy, <laughs> and it was you. And you're like, "Hey, we're gonna do this. We're all good." And I'm like, I, I, "And Seth, I think was the director." That's right. I'm just remembering as I go, and I'm like, "Hey, is it?" Is it weird that I, you know, I'm a guy and it's, and he's like, no, it's all equal and it's just stunt people. And I'm like, right. And I'm not loving it. And then when she gets on, she goes, oh no, a rock. It's so scary. I'm like, I don't think she should talk if she's my, you just keep, you keep like crying and acting like you're me. And I'm like, that's not what I'd say. And no one has any problem with it. No. And I think when I, when I put on that wig and, I think we looked a lot. It alike. was pretty close. Yeah, it was pretty close. Uh, I'm gonna say. Yeah, Dana, you blew it. You missed Br- out. British, Irish, uh, Scandinavian, German. Wish. I Fran- wish. Yeah. French. I wish. British, Irish, all the way. Right. Mostly Irish. Mostly Irish. My brother lives in Sweden, so sometimes I people assume there's some Scandinavian, mm-hmm. but no, none that we can find. Lots of Norway. Lots of Scottish. Ooh. 
and lots of Irish. I'm British, American, and Southwest. I'm Airlines. Have you guys done the? <laughs> have you done the twenty three and Me? Have you done any of that stuff? Terrified. No. Uh, my yeah. son did, and he had a disproportionate amount of Neanderthal. So mm. I don't know why. <laughs> maybe that ex- maybe that <laughs> explains something. I don't know. Well, it's not like he's half Neanderthal, and um, my wife's half Dutch. There was no Dutch. No, no, his grandfather was 100% Dutch, and there's no Dutch, and a lot Weird. of cavemen. Anyway, welcome. We're, this is, we're going to do this for the rest of the podcast. It's about genealogy today with our <laughs> expert, Dr. Sheila. Oh my gosh, that's right. I'm here to promote my podcast. Thank you for reminding me. Do not me. forget about this. I listen to it, and it's one of those things you go like, I, God, that what a great thing to do right now it's so fun because like, everyone's in therapy our therapist we have a a company that we love a sponsor that does online therapy so therapy is big i listen to the chris parnell and a gas star hysterical yeah, I mean, it's really so funny and they're so Thanks. easy it's better than this podcast put it that way if you're listening <laughs> to this, switch over it's not a competition, but they're they're nice. They're like 22, 25 minutes. Amy plays a uh, uh, megalomaniacal like but with so many cuz I I was in therapy for 5 years. I still see or talk to a therapist. Yeah, There's you're not done. You're capturing a rhythm and a thing, especially in that every time someone says something, you just ask them another question kind of. <laughs> so that yeah. makes me feel sad and sad is feeling bad about myself and feeling bad about myself. They do their so, own therapy, basically. So anyway, that's all I have to say. Well, would you talk about it? Promote it or just say why you're doing it? Well, it's super fun. We did it during the strike and we just improvised with a bunch of our buddies like Anna and Chris and a bunch of SNL people are on it. Rachel Dratch, Paula Pell, Tina Fey. Um, we have like um, couples, people that are actual couples in real life and people that like are like comedy partners like Abby and Alana from Broad City. We have all these different people come in and I play a, a therapist named Dr. Sheila and it has to be said in the form, <laughs> yes. form of a question because yeah. she's not a doctor. And it's just that fun game where I'm bad at my job and they have something they want to work out and we just improvise and cut it down. And it, it's just been a blast. Like it's, it's been very creatively fun because it's been a minute since I've I don't know, gotten to play character. The improv to- bones are rusty. It, yeah. I mean, when the one yeah. I, I heard, and it was probably the first one, but I don't know if it said who it was. So I know your voice, your voice is very unique and then uh, and distinctive, but who was the first couple that was that had the mom problem? Ah, that, happened, that was out today. And that is the, the gr- three great Chicago improvisers, Pete Gross, Gene Villapique, and Stephanie Ware. And that is... That was the premise of that is super fun is basically a couple comes in and they're like, what's the problem? He's like, I don't know what the problem is. And the wife is like, his mom is really meddling in our relationship. Mm -hmm. So I, Dr. Sheila encourages her to talk about um, how much she hates her (laughs) mother-in-law. And then we reveal that she's been hiding under a pile of blankets the whole time. (laughs) 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 <laughs> and those three yeah th- those three performers are just like expert improvisers and yeah you know being uh I, i've done a little improv but i don't really do it and it was uh, mostly because it was so hard and when you hear it so smooth like that i guess there's editing but i was thinking it sounds so conversational that i was thinking where are they cutting because it's just boom 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 and in so many throwaway lines that are just like and he's like, uh, well, I eat breakfast with my mom. She comes over in the morning and makes me my cereal. And and does that bother you? And the wife's like, well, I do sleep in. You know, I usually get up at 9, 9.30, 10, 10.30. <laughs> that was such a funny answer. 9, 9.30, 10, 10.30. And, uh, but there's so many little, um, little texture jokes like that that keep it going, aside from the overall feel that is a funny idea of the, who's the queen of the house. And, and, and he suggests that his mom could be co-mom of their babies. I think, is that what they call it? I love the way that the the laugh points just sneak up on you because the rhythm you're using for the therapy is so accurate. There's a, there's a kind of a, 
It's almost like a dialect in a way. It's yeah, softly- I think it, I think it's really yeah. I, I love therapy too, Dana. I love it. I revere it and I'm in a lot of it. And I'm I love watching couples therapy and listening mm-hmm. to couples therapy too. I'm always fascinated by how vulnerable people will be um publicly. Like it's like, whoa, I can't believe they're sharing this with the whole world. But I could listen to it forever. So, and I love podcasts. By the way, love your podcast. I've listened to almost every episode. You know, probably every single person on the podcast. That's crazy. So great uh, that I get getting a chance to do it. I'm so grateful. You you made my day. I love it. Yeah. And you know, <laughs> we all we all, SNL, like you've said many times, is kind of the. It's like you were in um, very specific, like special forces, and yeah. you all just want to kind of share stories about the nightmares that you continue to have about it 20 years later. It's all poor, poor rich people. It is funny. We're like special ops. We say war and then people say, don't say that. So we changed it. I know. It. I sh- you're right. I shouldn't we say that. We changed it to SWAT team. I <laughs> said it once here. It's like the Marine. And I, I, and I backed off of it. In 10 <laughs> seconds, right. I said, please don't write me any letters because it's fun to say that. I did not mean to equivocate it in that way. No, I, I, no. I would just say if someone is unknown, maybe in an improv group like yourself, and is suddenly on national TV, and then we all, as an audience, we, oh, what's her name? Amy Poehler. Oh, she's getting really good. It's like a reality show. Oh, she's really confident. Now she's right. You know, Lots so- of opinions, yeah. Lots of opinions, yeah. Message boards. Like, I started when message boards came out, so it wasn't, mm-hmm. it wasn't, Um, there wasn't any Twitter or yeah. anything yet. But it was these message boards that used to spring up like the next day. And I, so I started around when I, 2001, TiVo, remember TiVo? Oh, TiVo yeah. came into play. So it was like, ooh, I could fast forward SNL for the first time. Like that was. <laughs> what a gift. <laughs> <laughs> what a gift. What a million dollar idea. <laughs> um, I, I'm not so sure that's a good thing, Amy. No, um, I talked to TiVo. I'd rather have them to like watch the show as opposed right. to. Or, you know, I mean, I'll go thing. for a pause, but that's. You record it, it and then you, you, never, you like never really watch it. Everyone has a Lauren. You might as well do your 10 seconds of Lauren because you oh, have yeah. to have a Lauren. Oh, my God. I, lo- I love it. My Lauren <laughs> is not great. But, yes, it's very. No, there is um, no. There's no. Yeah, jo- it's, it's very. Just what- um, <laughs> um, my Lauren is a little more paternal, which is like when he comes on the floor right before a sketch and goes like, uh, do you like these wine glasses or these, you know, is this a, <laughs> does this table look right for you? And you're just so nervous. You're about to do a sketch in a restaurant. You're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Are you happy with the wine glasses? Okay, okay. okay You're like, okay, you mean okay. on the table in the sketch? Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're like, five, four. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My yeah. first season, I don't know if he Great. did that later. It was a glass of Chardonnay and he would be outside because then he went under the bleachers. Well, that was for the dress show mostly. But during the live show, you, you're so fucking terrified. And mm-hmm. Lauren's went around with a glass of wine mm-hmm. acting so like there's not a live tv show going on it was just amazing to watch him try to by osmosis calm us down i guess you know i'm well, it's really oh sorry go ahead <laughs> i was saying i'm waiting to get pushed out on update in that chair i'm in the dark and he's like do you know who's winning the yankees <laughs> i'm like right now i don't know i got i i have to look at the cards it's Bye. a mind trick the non sequitur <laughs> to distract you from the the chair turns and there's 10 million people watching you go ahead amy Thoughts? no i was gonna say when you guys talk about your experiences at the show too on, on on your on this podcast it kind of feels like the before times because my first show was two weeks after 9 11 so for like the first three years or so at the show you know the chardonnay was gone it was very much like serious business to keep oh. comedy afloat. You know, it was very like, will we ever laugh again? And how can we do comedy? And, you know, New York is under attack. It was all this like, how do we make fun of politics? Like it was just this like slow uh-huh. build back to get to Palin and Hillary by the end of that run. But it took so long to even, you know, so I can just remember starting that job and being like my dream job. I was 30 years old. I started, I was like, here we go. And then, and then, <laughs> then all that happened and it was like, 
will we ever laugh again? That was basically the headline. Yeah, it's and true. It was like, and it was like, could we though just a little bit? Cause I'm, cause I'm here now. <laughs> yeah. You know, it was, it was intense. Yeah. I, tr- I, I've been dreaming and working mm-hmm. toward this for my whole life. Could I do something funny? How could you do such a stupid sketch when what's going on in the world? And you're like, Oh, well, this is the idea is to get away. from. But it went on to your point. It went on for a long time of the idea. When will the next attack come? And yes. where it really are we? It wasn't an awesome. It, so, there was a really anxious period. Mm. I don't know when it, un- finally we kind of, I guess 2004. It felt like 2003, 2004, but don't forget, you know, there was like anthrax in the building when we were there. It was like, you know, mm-hmm. it was wi- wild. But I think it felt around 2000, I, I had one year of overlap with Will Farrell, and mm-hmm. he did a sketch uh, I guess it must have been 2001, 2002, um, like about a guy who was really patriotic and he was wearing like. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, like in the, the hot tub. He was yes. a, he was wearing a Speedo. He's going to work, I think, Dan. I think it was Matt Piedmont might have wrote. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. you're right. And uh, he wears, he has, a, he's very patriotic. Yeah, yeah, that was a big one. It's very Will, the way he wore the Speedo, the way he splayed his legs. I mean, he is, mm-hmm. he's brave or whatever you want to call it. He's just out there but so that was really broke the seal a little bit yeah and he had you know we had stopped doing any bush stuff any we had we didn't do any politics during that time Mm, interesting but that was like a big a big silly stupid you know guy in a speedo sketch Mm. and the audience really loved it and you're like okay maybe maybe this is going to be okay maybe so but we did a bunch of dumb pop culture stuff because you know it was like Britney Spears snake trainer was like a character I was trying to get on because <laughs> <laughs> because no one wanted to talk about news yeah. politics so it was it was weird but it you got, kind of it, appreciate the big silly ones more even later on big, big dumb oh, yeah. whatever word you want to apply to them broad really just balls out funny where you get sort of you want to get that I love Lucy kind of roll of a laugh if you you know I got it with the dog on. I, it wasn't me. It was that sketch, Massive Head Moon Harry, just unleashed mm-hmm. a whole I Love Lucy type of laughter because I was fighting with a dog over a, a fake fake head. <laughs> fake brains. <laughs> but it seems like, you know, just as an overview here for a second, you came on the scene and then by the time you left, you were just as good as anyone had, had ever done that show. I mean, you, I, I believe, and I say this to people with all sincerity, I mean, like the thing you did with Maya, the the Long Island ladies, you you were both brilliant and you were just so in the pocket of that character rhythmically. Like I watched the immersion of that. It was oh, it was just beautiful to watch that sketch. I mean, oh, thanks, Dana. That means a lot. Um, that sketch that felt like we could have only done it when we were like seniors, like we were we were relaxed enough to do it. Mm. Um, we wrote that with Emily Spivey, the great Emily Spivey. Yeah, we hear about have, her a lot. Yeah, you should have her on this. She would be an incredible guest. And yeah, we improvised a lot of that. Like it was just a lot of overlappy. The cards were kind of loose and we kind of knew what we were going to say, but not really. And I don't think we would have been able to do that in the first couple of years. I know I wouldn't have. I would have been too results. Yeah, that's what I mean. That I, th- I find that a lot. There's maybe Eddie Murphy, the most extreme the other way, like as mm. confident in day one, apparently. <laughs> and then there's people who have a, a pretty quick run up, but then something that just goes and goes and then the audience discovers you. And then it's, you know, could you, I, I mean, I don't want to put, you don't have to do that character for five seconds, but if you, <laughs> what would she say to David and I right now? I mean, well, just, like she's, you know, it's a very important time because it's sweater weather, like sweater weather's coming. It's very, 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 she's going, she's having a lot of hot flashes and she enjoys the nip in the air. But we, we base those two <laughs> ladies, we base those ladies off of ladies that were in really one woman who was in the hair department, Jody Mancuso, who was running the oh, hair yeah. department. She was like, Long Island, like, uh, or Staten Island. I forget. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Jody, if I forget. And she had like, she was very like, and like gave it to you straight and just like, come sit, talk, let's talk. Like she just had this mm-hmm. chatty, fun energy that was kind of flirty, very maternal. And Maya and I used to just talk, uh, with her like that and talk like her. And mine was like, my lady had a little bit just cause I'm not particularly great with accents my lady probably fell into like a little boston at times just because that's my hometown 
But so we played Betty and Jody and they were just it was almost like those women that happen to have a TV show, but they weren't they were just chatting anyway. <laughs> so we had a lot of fun where we would just the camera would just come up on us and we were already in conversation and the camera would pull away and we were still talking. So that was the kind of vibe. It was it was uh <laughs> Being a wasp from California, and then when I started going to New York and meeting characters in New York, and the, they were recognizable in that sense of come sit, have coffee, yes. please, yes. how are you? It's very, it's warm, it's extroverted, everything is out in the open, I feel spilkus, I this and that, but you guys just yes. nailed it beautifully I don't know, it just- I see, I just saw it on Instagram, Amy, like, you know how they pull up old sketches, they just, they start traveling around because it is sweater weather, so- they, I saw, I weather. saw clips of that, and uh, it's kind of fun when things live on, or they make a meme, or something pops out. Oh, it's the best! It's it's so cool. And then you go, oh, something mattered. Something I did in the old days totally. caught somewhere. You know, totally. People ask me this sometimes, like, what kind of compliments do you like to get? And I always say specific ones. You know, I like that line and that thing. And so when you're out and about in the world. Uh, just what what do people come up and say to you? Maybe maybe they talk about some of your movies or certain sketches or. It's funny, you know. It, you can kind of tell like the millennials love Parks and Rec. Like that was their show, mm -hmm. um, and that's a show that like a lot of teenagers discover during the pandemic. So there's a lot of millennial and Gen Z love for Parks and Rec. Mm -hmm. The Gen Xers and above know me more from SNL. Um, or, you know, more like movie or like hosting stuff. Mm -hmm. um, Golden but, Globes. Yeah, yeah, like they kind of know that more, I think. But or like maybe they saw Mean Girls 25 years ago or something. But All right. um, But it kind of feels like I get a lot of nice women. That's like my demo is nice. You know, Tina and I are on tour right now and we're having a blast. And like we it's just like the nicest women in the <laughs> audience. <laughs> I just um coming with their friends or their daughters you know so i get a lot of just like friendly women so i'm lucky that i don't get you know occasionally and i get and i get mistaken all the time for other women whether it's tina or dratch or like i you know they kind of mush us all together which is which is fine with me really you know. <laughs> <laughs> but that happens sometimes too but it's okay well my wife is not a comedy fanatic or anything but she uh I told her that you and Tina were doing a, a show. She goes, "Oh, I I would see that show." Yeah, exactly. We're make we're doing that show for your wife. So. I think that um, well, she's a nice woman. I go back to that, but so she's a nice woman. it's uh, you know the Golden Globes kind of cemented it. And we all we saw you do an update. You know, there's Tina and you guys have this connection. I'm assume really truly really good friends yep. and have the chemistry of Steve Martin and Martin Short. Um, and so seeing that is like. Well, this is going to be fun because when I think of you too, even though you did satirical jokes on Golden Globes, it was still always fun. Yeah. I just I, I think that's a good brand to have. <laughs> you're going to have fun. It's underrated. I think you're right. I think I don't know. I, I'm in no way an expert in hosting things. But one thing I did learn really quick was from SNL too. Like if you don't look like you're relaxed or having fun, the audience gets very stressed. Yeah, they're worried about it. I when I see hosts and they're either nervous or stressed or even like coming in angry, like I don't know why I'm here, like that kind of thing. <laughs> it's like, oh no, I get so stressed because you are hosting a party. You're supposed to look like you're having fun. Like mm -hmm. it's a party. Like who cares? It's an award show. Who cares? You you Maya, it was it you Maya and Tina. Was that uh, at the Academy Awards? They, we didn't host it. We just like opened it because yeah. that was a good trick of like Great less trick. pressure. They're not the host, but you're on longer than you should be. And yeah. you're just joke machine. And then everyone's like, fuck, where are these? Let's, why aren't they here the whole time? It's so great. Yeah. You don't have a month of lead up. Like, what are you going to do? What's so funny? Because, you know, those hosting gigs are a lot of work. Mm -hmm. They're hard. There are a lot of jokes to write and get through. And then also you can get you can you know now they like are kind of you can fall into traps and you can people can get mad yeah <laughs> and so you're like oh my god forget it then. someone you know always what? has a problem with it no matter what i know it's okay it's like when billy bob thornton got his emmy i think he goes 
Uh, I'm not going to say anything because you can get in trouble. Uh, I, I'm, I'm substituting Bill Clinton as uh, Billy Bob Thornton. I apologize. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything because you can get in trouble for saying something these days. So he just walked off, you know. But to the fun part, you might find this funny in a way because John Lovitz, I was the one who kept saying, John, you got to do stand up. So I was kind of, I'm no expert, but I'm coaching him a little bit. And I go, John, the one thing you always have to remember right before you go out because you can forget, just say to yourself, have fun. And he goes, I did it. I tried it. And then I started having more fun. And then I was getting bigger laughs, you know, John. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, it's an amazing thing. But sometimes you go, what is going on? I'm not having fun. What, oh, I, for, I, I forgot to have fun. It's the hardest. I think it's actually like the last piece. It's the hardest piece to learn because you're pushing or you're mm -hmm. nervous or your head somewhere Close else. On, and yeah. then it, yeah. And then when you actually relax, the audience just relaxes with you. I mean, I learned a lot from Will Ferrell that way. And because I would watch mm -hmm. him perform and he had this like mischievous quality where mm -hmm. he, him and the audience were in on it together, you know, it was kind of like this, this bemused <laughs> quality of yeah. like, can you believe we're all here doing this stupid thing? And it would, it, it, you know, it just like the minute they see you sweat, it, 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 it's, it's, it gets so stress-free. They tighten up. Cause this goes to therapy or something, but try not to try. Try not to push, yes. try not to be desperate, try not to rush it, um, take your time, but be in the pocket. And of course, when that voice goes silent, then you know you and Tina are just on a roll. Well, what do you guys do when, you let, this pro rarely probably happens for you anymore, but like, let's say you're trying new material and it's not working. What do you do? Do you pull back? Do you pull back in that moment? Or do you put like, do you push? Because I'll tell you that what I have to work on is pulling back too hard and like getting sleepy. <laughs> 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 Your joke isn't working and you go to sleep. <laughs> I go to sleep. I go right to sleep. <laughs> uh, you, you, you recoil. It, I, I, you know, it's funny when I, when something doesn't work, there's, I had it happen on the road recently where the whole show is going well and one joke doesn't click. And I go, I had to stop and go, literally no one bought that. Not one person. And it wasn't a couple of you. Everyone said no sale. And I feel like you're wrong on this one. Ooh, and I'm going to get, I yeah. give you one freebie. Yeah. And then they don't know what to make of that. They're like, well, well, you're mad at us, but it's like joke mad. But when something doesn't work in a regular set, or if you're doing a set on TV, what happens to me is you get spooked like a horse because my brain goes, what happened? And I can't think of my next joke because mm -hmm. I'm, it's preoccupied with what do I do? Why? Wait, should I even do the next one? Why, what did it just, did I say it wrong? I and know. then you're like, that throws you. If you take one extra second, they think something's up. It's got to be just so smooth like a play. Boom, boom, boom. I know. I, I have a bit in my act. I won't even say the bit, but whatever. It's sort of like two thirds of the way, like you're trying to- oh, yeah bring it to the barn, you know, and the last two times <laughs> not landing. And I know Jerry Seinfeld, who's this Fangali about this, check the setup, you know, yeah. if, if the setup is, <laughs> see, God, you know, but I, I did this for Steve Marvin. <laughs> Jerry's going to do a live album on vinyl. And it's gonna you're gonna see a picture of him on the cover, and it's called Paper Clips. Why? <laughs> um, just like that joke, Jerry. We love him. He's brilliant. But I, um, I think sometimes you, when you first say it in a joke, and you're kind of connected to it or a bit, and then you can get a little bored, and you maybe drop just even part of the setup or mm -hmm. stuff like that. Can yeah, because you're doing. Are you actually out there solo in your show with Tina as well? Yeah, we do some sketch. We do stand up. We do. Um, do you do update stuff together? We do update. We do. Yeah. Really? Do oh, great. Mm -hmm. So, what's yeah. your first line, ladies and gentlemen? Here to do some stand up for our show is oh, Amy no. Poehler. No way! No I'm not doing. Way. Are you out of your mind? You're out of your I am mind. not doing. With well, I thought you your two? first line would be, would be, you'd say what, you'd say what's up, and then the name of the town. What's up, Chicago? Hey, what's up, Denver? Yeah, <laughs> that's a good first line. Here's my yeah. opener. I'd be, I'd go like this. Hey guys, Tina will be out in a minute. <laughs> Just because. Oh I'm, my god, it's funny that you say that. I'm like, I'm gonna do a little stand up while Tina gets her IV drip. That's my, <laughs> there that's you go. My <laughs> well, I think 
And we're Dane and I were talking before <laughs> like we brought you on because we're both on the road here and there, and there's so many things about the road that are so tricky and icy that you know it is true something about like the, the the show is the fun part obviously and it's so hard just to get to their city you just want to get high five like i got here i'm in the theater <laughs> get in the and hotel I, and i don't i feel like shit but here i go let's do this because you almost never feel great and you're almost never like well that was easy it's like this is problem problem and then the hotel and getting there and What's backstage? There's so many interesting questions uh, we were thinking of with you guys. When do you go on? Oh, I, I know. It's so fun because you're right. Every different theater and space has like a vibe mm -hmm. and it has like the guy that's in charge, like uh -huh. the one that character. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's always the character. It's like, oh, I can't answer that. You have to talk to Dan about that. And you're like, OK, where's Dan? Like, it's always. Dan Dan's doesn't come always in today. around. Dan doesn't come in. <laughs> Dan, does, Dan zooms in from home. <laughs> My guy's usually named Dan as well. I don't know if he can mm -hmm. travel. Do you do a sound stuff. check? We do. We do. We oh, do you have to have a lot of you you have stuff to, going on. Because you, yeah, yeah, yeah. you got a montage of greatest hits or whatever, and you've got whatever. You have a piano player and stuff like that? or No, we have some recorded music stuff, but yeah. we don't have a live. Yeah. A, and you um, sing together? Live piano player. But it's, what's that? Do you sing a song together? Maybe. You have a good voice, Dana. Have you heard her sing in the beginning of the Thanks. podcast? Tonight, before I go to sleep, I'm going to try to figure oh. out what can't Amy Poehler yeah. do. Yeah. <laughs> what do you do to relax your giant brain? <laughs> well, I, I really like um, the, the water. Like that calms me down a lot. I like swimming and in a going pool, in ocean, the water. Lake. Mm -hmm. oh. ocean, lake, and swimming. I and like that. Can a lot. you swim? No, I can't. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I, I, I go to a hotel pool and I go freestyle and I go the length of the pool and I'm completely wiped out. And, uh, you know, I'm like sprinting, but I don't know it. And it's yeah. there is a whole technique to it, but you you've learned it, right? How to actually? I think if I need to get regulated, like my nervous system, water does help me. Whether even if it's a bath or just like getting in some water. But before a show, you know, I'm kind of used to. It's it's funny it, when I would do shows as an improviser and like sketch comedian with stand ups. I was always surprised that there wasn't a lot of chit chat. You know, there was there stand ups were just kind of trying like walking around talking or with their headphones, like thinking about their set and yeah. really, really, and frankly, trying to remember it, which is yeah. half the battle. Very true. And, and you, and with an improv and sketch, you know, it's like, you want to just like keep doing bits up until you go on stage. It's like, you want to just like mm -hmm. make a connection with the people you're performing with. And so I kind of tend to like want to just chit chat and talk and, and not overthink things. Mm -hmm. Um, but now that I'm older, like sometimes I just want to like do some like light stretch, <laughs> light stretching, <laughs> just some light stretching. For so sure. I don't pull a hammy. Oh, definitely. You can't go hi. And then your arms <laughs> like, oh, sorry. You know, I, I mean, I try to do a, a wide squat and make sure because I might get in that position or <laughs> move around, stretch your calves. Yeah. Have you ever had any a physical thing or cut yourself on stage? Oh, or? my God. Yes. I just <laughs> well, I'm just getting over this thing. I talk about it on stage. I'm just getting over this thing, which is it's just so embarrassing. It sounds like a <laughs> it sounds like a, it sounds like a bad cocktail. But I had this thing this year called frozen shoulder. Know all about it. it. Yes. I bet your wife, uh, like, was it your wife that went through it? No, no. It was our mutual manager, I think. Okay. Oh, it, had a frozen feels, shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. It feels, well, what it's does just, it do? It's the weirdest thing. It comes out of nowhere. And it's like, uh, from my anecdotally, I find it's mostly women of my age, but it's just like inflammation. And suddenly you just like, can't lift your arm all the way up. Okay. And mm -hmm. so it's this, it just feels like you're like, you just feel really fucking old. You just are like, <laughs> oh, fucking hell. What is this? And it'll take about a year. <laughs> a and year. you're just like, what? A year? And it's proven to be about a year. <sighs> so yeah. it, it sucked. It's, and They're just making up names for old things. Frozen shoulder sounds good. And you're like, well, that, is it a real thing? Or I'm just falling apart. It's a real, real thing. I was doing a podcast with David. I never even said this before. We're doing what we, we've done a few live. And then my, uh, I think it was my left foot, my toes 
splayed out in a spasm <laughs> and were and were I was in massive pain, but I just was riding it out, just riding it out. We're interviewing someone. Spade, take it. And I'm like, well, and it doesn't happen like, to me all the time. They just the toes went out and got really yeah. angry. As soon as it was over, I just walked around, it was fine. But we have to, we're supposed to do all this freaking stuff all day long, pulling and stretching and Pilates, all this stuff to keep us together, yeah. uh, you know, so. I did, and I know, and I was so much younger when I was on SNL and I think about how much I just partied and <laughs> just walked, like I didn't do, I didn't worry about any of it. None. I just wasn't even thinking about any of it. No. I wasn't thinking about collagen. I wasn't thinking about, Water, <laughs> nothing. Well, putting... No, wasn't even thinking about water. Did we know how? Do we? Did we? I know. I look. You see, picture yourself because you're in show business. You go, damn. I, I. Did I know good. how cute I was? <laughs> yeah, like, I know. Did we? I know. Did we know how young we were? It just is it always it on young? Who said that? Cole Porter. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't have a glass of water during SNL. I was there six years. You never that had just one wasn't one. the thing that everyone. I didn't know what carbs were. I ate fucking pasta every day. <laughs> I ate Wally and Joseph's. I ate pizza, and I always felt shitty. I never put anything together. I'm like, what is it? What is it? I don't have the Rubik's cube to figure this out. All I eat is carbs, no water, and diet coke. And my body is so sore, Amy. When I every day, it's like my shoulders going. I open a car door, and they're like, what? I'm like, I do this every day. And it's like, oh, what are you doing? Like, it's, it forgets overnight. I'm doing basic things. I know. Um, well, you know what? I, you know what has helped me with this? And I know this is probably like people listening are like, oh, my God, be quiet. How old, old are you guys? <laughs> yeah. But you know what I've been doing is I've been doing cold dips. And they've oh, changed, changed, for changed real? the game. Yes. I do cold dips and it changed the game. Because that's a big deal. Now, do you do it in a in a bathtub with ice in it? You do it. You do, take the or is it in a pool or a lake or where are you get? I have it like I have a cold dip tub. Okay, a cold dip tub. Yeah. Okay, like a tub that yeah. I keep cold. So mm -hmm. and I have a like a sauna, a little sa hut sauna. Uh, so I do fifteen minutes of the sauna and then I plunge in the cold Ooh. dip, and it helps a lot, David. With Inflammation. That. Yes. I yes. think you and Tina. <laughs> should do 10 minutes in a cold plunge doing update on stage. Just bring out the ice. That's a gr I would love that. I think our endorphins would be flying. And sponsors. Yeah. I'm in an undisclosed location, but I have a pool for the first time in a long time <laughs> and don't heat it. I like it as cold as I can get it now Whoa. for that very reason. Wait, you up. know, it's amazing if you get into a cold lake because I, I always yeah. look at it as a lake that's really too warm how you really mm. suffer for about 10 seconds. But if you're moving, all of a sudden you're like, oh, it's fine. Yeah, that's the thing about getting older is like forced austerities. Like what can I do to myself that a doctor is not telling me to do, but that I can do to torture myself? Like I have the privilege of cold dipping or like I only eat apples after 5 p.m. And, and it's like, why? It's like, just that's what I'm doing now. Like that's, <laughs> it just that's sounds, it's gotta, it's gotta be good, <laughs> I know. I'm trying something. Yeah, yeah, well, it's 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 always nice. You have to get a blood test and stuff, and you're wondering, well, did they find something? The doctor's <laughs> talking to you, and like it's fine, it's good, uh, everything's okay. So my guy, my guy looks at my blood test. I sit there, and he goes, hmm. <laughs> then he goes like this. Mm -hmm. Don't love that. You, you know the worst thing. Your worst thing about you hear from a doctor. I went to a dentist because I had a tooth thing. This is what we're going to talk about the rest of the podcast. <laughs> It's so it. tragic. And the guy comes in and he actually said, it. he actually said, wow, when he looked at my mouth. You know, <laughs> <laughs> he said, wow. I said, wow. What do you mean? Wow. Wow. What? Wow. Wow. What? Motherfucker. Wow. He said it yeah. like, oh, he said it like walking. He said it wow. like walking. Wow. 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 Yeah. Three. Uh, Amy, whoa, whoa, Amy, whoa. I just said someone, were you in a walking family? <laughs> I never saw that. I said to my friend, I go, look at this ridiculous. Oh, you all were walking in a sketch, right? Yes. And that was so fun because, you know, I think I, I, um, I benefited from low expectations. I don't think anyone expected me to pull out a good walk-in, but I was playing a little kid, like a little girl who was, <laughs> who was doing a walk-in. And I had had, I had had a friend who had told me a story about, about Christopher Walken and that, you know, he was, uh, he went to, uh, he was on set one time and he was like, 
you know, are there any ghosts here? Like, look, you know, this place is spooky. <laughs> he kept saying it's spooky. <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was such a, a funny word to say. So I got to say ghosts. And spooky. And <laughs> that him. was, yeah, that was enough. To Did do. he care at all? He, he was one of the most interesting hosts um, because he was really, he's a really, a, a, you know, no surprise, eccentric dude. So he was really comfortable with silence. So, you know, most <laughs> people, when you're just waiting around to run the scene again, you're just st- sitting on the floor, like you chit chat, like, mm-hmm. but he would want to just sit quietly bef- between each mm-hmm. you know so he he might have been the longest i've ever gone <laughs> seated next to someone and not talking like five six seven minutes it would just be me and him and we wouldn't talk and it became like a, a contest in my own mind to see how long we could go and he was he was fine with it he was fine with it <laughs> get everyone shut up yeah he was super super talented and God very, damn. very. I expensive. swear, he's so interesting. He's riveting. The first yeah. sketch, I don't know what it was. I maybe a church chat or something. Anyway, the, we were, did it all. We rehearsed it, but on air, he never looked at me. He just looked straight at the cue cards yeah. and read it, and it worked. <laughs> yeah, and it, and it was funnier, you know. <laughs> so I, thought, I heard, I heard a rumor that he takes out. I don't know if this is true, but hmm, that he takes rumor. out all the all the punctuation in his scripts. <laughs> wouldn't surprise me because his right? rhythm is so specific that might get him out of that. his get out of his rhythm don't like to pause in ways like that i mean john lovitz yeah. again my friend john he's the kind of guy who goes is it you are you are you making up that dialect is that the way you really talk and he said walk and just started laughing you're making it up, right? <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, he seemed like he had a good sense of humor about himself. Yeah, and who knows? You know, there's certain actors who just extenuate their rhythms as they become film stars over the years, mm-hmm. like Al Pacino, when, when he feels like it. Um, yeah. And Walken, too. He was in that Woody Allen movie as the psycho driver. It was in the 70s. Yeah. First time oh, I saw him. Yeah. You know? And he goes... Then, Sometimes I like to turn the car. I think of turning into the headlights. Yeah. And he goes, well, I, I wouldn't on this trip. Yeah. Maybe put a pin in that. And we'll, and, you know, it's like a crazy. No, just uh, when, as soon as you drop me off, you can uh, indulge your picadillos if you want to go into the, <laughs> and get some rhubarb and, you know, grind. Um, but yeah, he said, uh, just one of the thrills of doing Saturday Night Live is just doing sketch comedy with someone like uh, Christopher Walken. And, you know, I, I don't Seeing him in the deer hunter, it just like you know, growing up in the 70s, like I just saw every movie way too young. I was I saw so many <laughs> yes. violent images. You saw that at what? Oh, oh, I can't even imagine. I think I was seven, maybe. <laughs> oh my God. And it was One like I learned about, scenes. yeah, I learned about Vietnam, I learned about prisoners of war, I learned about, um, uh, you know, uh, Russian, uh, Russian, roulette. Russian roulette. I learned it all from Christopher Walken, and it was Fun. like, you know, and then I went to first grade. Like that's, that <laughs> I got it. I'm heading wow. first grade guys. I'm tired. I was at the deer hunter last night <laughs> that they were getting slapped in the face and now I'm going to the exorcist and they're yes. forced to play rust and roulette and they would slap them and say, Mow! and slap. Yes. Them. And I don't know what yes. that word meant in Vietnamese, but it's one of the most riveting, darkest oh, scenes in film history. Darkest. I'm trying to think. I saw the reefers with Steve McQueen when I was, ele- I saw Bonnie and Clyde. When I was like 11. Well, it's a little tamer. A little tamer, tamer. But there was a sex scene. It was a little, you know. So, but yeah. Mm-hmm. You've seen those 70s badass movies as a little girl? We, and you know, I was the generation that got like HBO and MTV like in our house. And no one was paying attention. So suddenly you just, there are movies on that you should not, I should not have been watching. It's just that, yeah, no one knows. It's just the next movie on. And, and yep. everyone's gone. You're like, oh, what's this? Oh, uh, The Omen. Yep, The Omen. Let's see what this is about. Oh, this oh. might be fun. Hope, hopefully, <laughs> I hope you both didn't see this movie because it stayed with me and disturbed me very much. And I think it's Dustin Hoffman. I know it's Dustin Hoffman. It's the first Straw Dogs. Look it up, no. kids. I don't even want to talk Fucking about it. Fucking Lovett sent me that the other day. Are oh. you? Is that crazy? He sent me a preview. Watch this movie. Straw Dogs with Dustin Hoffman? Yes. Oh, is that, why? Is that weird? but it is... 
dark. Yeah. Well, I was just watching Midnight Cowboy the other day. They had a showing of it mm-hmm. in New York, and I was like, oh, I love Midnight Cowboy. I love Dustin Hoffman and that, yeah. and I love John Voight. And then I'm like, oh, my God, I forgot this giant, horrible, you know, assault scene. There's so many, you know, there's mm-hmm. so much assault in that movie, like flashbacks of what happens to John Voight's character and his girlfriend. Yeah. And I just like, I forget with 70s movies, you just be – cruising along and then there'd be like a really violent scene that you're just oh no and when now i'm the mother of teenagers and i like oh you should watch this movie and then there's just this scene that's always oh i forgot this scene yeah. was in this movie it's brutal i even got i got scared at tommy uh dana i was young and my brother uh-huh. took me oh uh, mm-hmm. and and the gypsy acid queen and then it, she threw like acid in the guy's face so there's fire at the beginning mm. and it burned his face and i was like and I go, I have a stomachache. And I went to the <laughs> lobby and then I never came back because I got scared. Aww. They go, what's up? I go, no, I'm fine. I just have some stuff to do out here. <laughs> Literally nothing to do. What's the first, have you shown a movie to your to your kids where it blew their mind and it was kind of satisfying? Because at one point, I don't remember how old they were. This is my example. I put on Jaws for them. Mm. And maybe they were sort of 12, 14, whatever. Okay, see you later, kids. So I come back ten minutes later, and they're they're not moving. They're not blink. They're just staring. Whoa! They just hit them at the right. You know, like oh man, this is amazing. So yeah, that was my- yeah. It, that's I mean, I have two boys. They really like a lot of sci-fi. You know, mm-hmm. uh, action adventure stuff. But they, I remember when they were really young. I Willy Wonka was the first one Ooh. that I, I was like, I think you're gonna love this, and they loved it, and I felt yeah. really. And and as far as comedy, like it it you know what you don't love what your mom likes. Like your mom is lame. Like you don't yeah. want to like what your mom likes. But so I almost had to let them discover SNL on their own. And they're at the age now they're thirteen oh, right. and fifteen, where they're they're at that age where they're like, I wonder what SNL is going to do about this. Like that's what you know. And you know, definitely their favorite. Anchors are Jost and Che, and of course. they, of course, and they just don't want to watch. They barely want to watch stuff I'm in. It's like it's embarrassing. Like it's their mom. Like right? They, do they want to watch their mom on TV? Have you recommended comedies that they give the thumbs down, like that you grew up with? Oh yeah, oh yeah. There's been so many things where I'm like, that's funny. Now that is, you should watch that. That's funny. Um, <laughs> oh, that's funny, mom. You got to check this out. This is really funny, mom. <laughs> yeah, and I'm always like, turn that off. That that guy is you. But um, I remember The Simpsons was a first crossover where we could mm-hmm. all watch it and they were kind of learning how to structure a joke and and they and, you know, I was laughing, too. But, um, yeah, it's always that that group on SNL, for example, when you're 12 or 13 and, you know, not to make you feel old, Dana, but that was you for me, yeah. which oh, was me too. Like, me too. I don't. Yeah, I, I feel terrific. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the I'm the youngest I've ever been at this particular your age. Your toes, your toes are not spasming at all. Everything is fine. No, no, nothing is spasm during. <laughs> and if they were spasming, I would cover for it. I would just get kind of quiet on the Zoom. <laughs> He'd and go I like might this, slunk down a little bit. I'd be right like in the uh, frame, come like this. And Amy toes. would go to herself. Is he spasming right now? <laughs> yeah. Is he? Mm-hmm. Uh, no, I feel I feel good. I do a lot of countermeasures for Amy. <laughs> I hydrate a lot. Oh, congrats. You know, Dana, sometimes I think, you know, because we all write and uh, we all write comedy and write this and whatever. And sometimes not just obviously comedies, but I'll watch a show and I'll be like, this is so fucking complicated. I am not even in the same uh, genre. I'm not a writer because the fact they have so many levels to these things. And I go, what is this dog shit I write? Why am I called a writer? This is ridiculous. I shouldn't even be in the guild. Well, we just do bite-sized, silly stuff. Every I week, know, you know, it's goofy. We don't, comedians don't really get awards. They don't, generally don't win Oscars. And we, we have the American Comedy Awards anymore. Or- oh, but you know what? I, you guys will be the right, people to talk, the right people to talk to about this. What irritates me so much, though, is that once a year at least, there's like someone that we would all consider genuinely funny mm-hmm. who gives a performance that's really good, you know, good acting performance. Mm-hmm. And people are always like, wow. And I'm like, are you, do you like, I think acting 
and comedy are so combined. They're so close. You know, mm -hmm. like you, ha one must be a good actor to sell a bit, tell a joke. Mm -hmm. To like, there's. I'm just. I'm always surprised that people are surprised that funny people can be good actors. Um, you know, so rarely mm -hmm. are good actors funny, but right. but funny people are often very good actors. And I always think it's just. I I think it. I don't think they get. I don't think people get. I don't think funny people. Well, it's such a rare commodity. But if we were, if comedy was outlawed, I would love to do drama or do do kind of realistic acting. But it's this is what I do best. I guess it's just a rare rare thing. And good comedy performances don't really get the old Oscars and stuff. You they see, don't. like somebody not saying us, just saying other people that are great at it and they do a great performance. It's not even considered. No, it's you go, crazy. Fine. There's a reason they say, well, who said this? Dying is easy. Comedy is hard. I know that was like from the vaudeville or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was tough. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm jealous of musicians, because when musicians have to play an <laughs> event, they just yeah. get up there and they play their song. Like yep. they play the song. Everybody wants that. They, they play the same song over and over again that everybody wants them to play. And when you're when you're going up there trying to do something funny, people are like, give us something new. We don't want to hear your usual stuff. Yeah. I'm like, how about this? It's old. You can't repeat your bits and then you have to create rapport. <laughs> and, oh, it sucks. I always want to plug in oh. a guitar and, oh, my God. After every line, you're judged. If they don't laugh, even people that aren't listening are like, I guess it's not going well. But with musicians, here it is. Applause. Here it is. Here's the next one. Applause. But there's no, like... I guess we did good. But do they yell did... out for you? Or do you get yell out for you, David? Or does do they yell out your hits? Or they or they any... yell stuff. I get sort of a sometimes a rowdier crowd. Uh, Dana, <laughs> I mean, uh, Tina, uh, what's your Amy? Uh, Dana and I have done corporates. Do, have you and Tina ever done a corporate? Oh yeah, I used to do. Uh, yes, yes. Oh and they're, really? I mean, <laughs> well, and I thing. used to. I used to do a lot of. We used to do a lot of corporate stuff for Second City back in the day, like, mm -hmm. you know, and this was before anyone, you know, knew our names, but we would have to go, <laughs> we would get paid, you know, to like, to, to do jokes about, you know, oh, old John so Miller. Yeah. Vice president, John Miller, like he's got crazy hair and he loves great, you know, wearing kooky ties and everyone would be <laughs> like, that's me. I'm John Miller. And you just have to do all these like specific <laughs> jokes. So yeah. hard. It's so hard. I work it's with so him. Hard. It's true. It's so him. You're doing it. Yeah. He's got um, three balls and beats his wife. Say something about it. <laughs> <laughs> I go, in my act? I don't know what to say. And then and then one guy laughs in the back. Yeah. And then everyone else is like, was that true? What? It's one guy I sets you, you up. <laughs> yeah. And the, the meet and greet. I'm sure you've had this, but I don't know if it's like alpha male stuff, but you're kind of, <laughs> I'm this little guy and I'm sort of the star of the show. We're in the meet and greet. And I have these guys just really kind of fucking wailing on my hand. I mean, <laughs> Ooh. and maybe they've had a couple cocktails. They show I'm like, off. I'm like, I had at one point, then I got tennis elbows, more, more ailments. So I had to do the fist bump or I had to kind of wave. And they're like, I want to put my mitts in time with your mitt and squeeze, you know. And I'll show you who's boss. I'm like, you're boss. We don't even have to do this. Yeah, I'm, you win, boss. Boss. I go, I have frozen hand and Dana has frozen elbow. <laughs> <laughs> and Amy has frozen shoulder. But at least my screen hasn't frozen. So <laughs> yeah, Amy, what you, so you're going to therapy and stuff. I mean, for first of all, just career wise. I mean, do you have any bug are you gonna try to do a dramatic film? Or you're you're directing, you directed wine country, you're yeah. writing, you're producing shit. I mean, what doesn't she do? Whoops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't be you scared. Have new glasses. Don't run away from it. She doesn't pay her taxes. Um, <laughs> no, um, <laughs> you just do um, a lot. You do a lot. Yeah, I have this production company called Paper Kite. So we produce a lot of TV and film. Mm -hmm. I love. I like doing a lot of different things. That's why, um, you know, and trying to stay, uh, uh, tr trying to stay doing a lot of different things because I find this business is very. I mean, the strike is a perfect example of it. Like, it's really fickle. It's really. You have to mm -hmm. stay, you have to know how to pivot. So like, yeah. I like acting and stuff and writing stuff and directing stuff. And, and, um, so I try to kind of do, you know, whatever is the, the next thing I try to do is, is different from what I just did. And, but I haven't done, I I've been more into writing and directing than performing lately. And the tour has been really fun because it's gotten me back into being excited. And this podcast 
has been fun because it's just get to play like a character, but actually doing TV or doing movies like it's so hard, it's so much time, so hard being on set. It's just takes up, as you guys know, yeah. it just takes up your movies life. Movies are the hardest are such a chunk beginning, middle, end of your day. And, you know, um, I, I feel luck, so lucky, like I had such a show that I love that I couldn't imagine going to do something else right away. And then, you know, suddenly I'm looking at, whatever it is, like six, seven years later. But so, yeah, I'm just kind of doing whatever feels right to do next. And I'm so lucky that you brought up wine country. I have such a group of ladies. It's kind of like you guys, it's you guys with grownups. Like, it's just like, I want to just keep doing stuff with the women I love. And they're so funny and there's so much fun. I mean, there's no better joy than doing stuff with your friends. Like that's success. And you, who was it? I liked that. You know, I love, I love this phrase. It's been used a few times in this podcast. A murderer's row is such a funny, but it was a murderer's row on wine country. You know, obviously Maya, Rachel, uh, Anna. Yes. We had a murderer's row in that movie. Paula Powell, Emily Spivey, Anna Gasteyer, Rachel Dratch, Tina Fey, Maya Rudolph. But then when I was at SNL, I was lucky. I was in this group of, um, Will Forte, Fred Armisen, yeah. Bill Hader, Andy Samberg, Seth Meyers, like Kristen Wiig. That all happened in my year too. Keenan Thompson. Like it was just so that was, they were so talented. People were so, so good and talented. And when I look at those cast photos of who I got and, and also the beginnings and endings of my time there, my endings, it was like, you know, Will Ferrell, um, Chris Parnell. And then and that was being then when I was leaving, you know, Kate McKinnon was coming in and like all these people were coming in that were. So that's the cool thing is you just if you're lucky, you get some overlap with people that you just love. Yeah. And that's the best. I had one year with Will. I got to watch him. Uh, one last question from me and then Dana, whatever he wants. But you <laughs> you you did Hillary. And then was it Kate did it after you? Yes. Yeah. And Anna, I think. Anna Gessler did it before me, maybe did Hillary oh, okay. before me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, there was a bunch of them. And and I did it when um, when Downey was writing a lot of them. And then and then um, yeah. and then we did when Palin, that was like first she was running it against Barack, you know, for the to, to win the thingy there. And then Barack won the thingy. What, what you call it? The nomination. <laughs> nomination. Yeah. yeah. Well, first he so won he the nomination, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. He beat Hillary and then Palin showed up. So it was so fun to be able to do those two characters together. Cause you don't get a lot of like female politicians getting to even do scenes together mm-hmm. half the time. Yeah. So mm-hmm. that was super, super fun to do. And it w- it felt like it was everybody was paying attention to that election. It was very, you know, yeah. I played Dennis. Ku- I played Dennis Kucinich one time and everyone was like, ah, <laughs> look him <laughs> up. Look Kucinich him up if you don't here. know who he yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> Dennis Kucinich. Well, then it became yeah. a lot, which, I, you know, we asked Keenan this question and we have, I've referred to it a couple of times, you know, about great casts or great cast members and, and and he just said the v- MVP basically is the women of since the 90, late 90s. And we have Jan Hooks and Nora Dunn, yes, our gener- Jan. but there's been so many dominant women. And even in later years now, the women play the male politicians. There's all the rules mm-hmm. are. So that's that's kind of cool. It's progress, I suppose, for, for, oh, yeah. for women. I mean, I, mean- I, w- I was very, very lucky to be dropped into that show at a time when Tina was the head writer Mm -hmm. and Molly and Sherry and Anna had just left. Like they had just done so much great work and yeah. I mean, I just kept going, just kept going. Yeah. I I think that wasn't always the case ever. You know, it, everyone has their version of their experience there. And I think there were stretches when women did not feel heard, supported, um, encouraged. And I'm sure there still are places and stretches now where the, like it, everyone has a completely different experience about their mm-hmm. time there. But I felt like I lucked out in that there were these like just killers that were there crushing that I felt I was part of that group. And I, you know, I felt very lifted up by them. So I was very lucky. It feels like it's been wiped out. If there was ever, you know, some dude in the seventies, you know, 
women aren't funny, not Lauren, but somebody, yeah. you know, like women yeah. aren't as funny as men. Why after Lucille Ball and others, they would say that, and Carol Burnett. But it seems now it's like, to me anyway, being a baby boomer, up, yeah. it's obliterated. This is a funny person. I don't think oh, yeah. I'm watching a woman. <laughs> I just go, they're funny. They're funny. So I guess I'm calling it progress a little bit, at least. For and me. I would even I would even say to expand it less about gender. Like I find the more talented you are, the less most unless you're. Yeah, you're just not you're not uh, that insecure. Like the funniest people I know love other funny people. They, yeah. That's what they love. They get drawn to other people's work regardless of 100%. race, gender. Yeah, they don't yeah. care. But if it's, it's people that like uh, have their own stuff, they're working out. And here we are back to therapy. Dr. Sheila would be able to get these people in and talk and say, like, I know you don't laugh at this person, but really, what's the thing about yourself that you're not not laughing at? What's the, what? <laughs> not laughing at. <laughs> what's part about you that isn't funny that you're mad at the yeah, women that are what funny? What are you mad about? But I, I do think, uh, you know, kind of dovetailing back into the quasi marine analogy or esprit de corps. But when you see somebody who makes you laugh or me personally, who does this and knows how hard it is or just some whimsical luck that something hits you and the rhythms are right and it works. And then watching other people do it and then really in your own mind going, well, they're doing it. They're doing it, I think, better than me. <laughs> you know, it's like and you kind of connect to them. And if you meet them socially, places, there's a frequency there or a shortcut. Uh, yeah. It's a it's a great way of communicating. And sense of humor um, is a good thing if you can have it, you know, in friends and relationships. It, it just cuts across. And anywhere I would be in the world, if a few comedians walked in, if it was any social awkward thing, uh, even if I knew them or didn't know them, I would instantly be a lot more comfortable. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, at parties I go up. I we, even those big Oscar type. You just zoom right over to the comedian. Anybody in the comedy world sort of gravitates together. Feel like your own little group. Mm -hmm. Totally, it fe absolutely feel like you're part. I mean, I I really mean it. Like I feel honored to be in a group um, that you guys feel like you're in too. I mean, I feel like I would I zoom get... right to you and Tina if I saw you out. I'd be like, guys, yeah, save, I, save I, me. What's going on? <laughs> I'm saving this for them, but I am a licensed therapist. I just, it's a casual thing I got. And why do you feel that way about your peers, Amy? Well, why do you feel the need to ask? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Check. Jesus. Mate. She's been practicing. <laughs> My therapist helped me. The one thing she said was, she basically <laughs> says, life is a shit show. Don't get involved in this idea that these people are living these dream lives on yes. Instagram or whatever, it's, it's all made up. To, to to live is to suffer and to embrace mm. it. You're like, oh, cool, okay, it's all right. It's kind of like where we're talking about, about SNL. You have to kind of believe that no one's really thinking about you. Everyone's kind of thinking about themselves. And if you take the pressure off of yourself that everybody's thinking about you, then you can have a good time. But most people are just thinking about themselves, you know? Life is hard and everyone's in their own head. It's The, the entire it is, audience, yeah. <laughs> No one's and you know that we all know that we we watch really successful people who kind of get what would, you know, be the platonic version of all the stuff everyone would want. And they're still just not happy. So <laughs> <laughs> happy is uh, is an elusive kind of concept, yeah. you know, because yeah, it is, going it is. for content at this point, if you're going striving content. because it's not a oh, well, uh, another cliche. So is it about the shiny things and the money or people talking to you at an airport it, ultimately yes. it is oh, but no. landing the bit right i mean for me anyway well david's no. different he's <laughs> coming up listen coming up with ideas or something that makes me laugh is like one of the last joys of like it's still yes. something works in your brain you're like oh this mm -hmm. is oh you that's gonna kill a code oh, of a joke yeah. or an angle and you go mm -hmm, fuck mm -hmm. that little things like that are really mean a lot you know. Yes, agree. And hopefully we can still do it when we're like not able to stand up anymore. Lift our shoulders. We'll do sit down. Yeah. You guys will do sit down. No matter what they say, if use it or lose it is a is a concept, you know. I think the more you yeah. I mean, I think trying to memorize your act. Like say you have kind of mm -hmm. a new act. I was shooting a special and just the the exhaustion of your brain, it must the be focus. some kind of workout to keep you articulate. Um or all things being equal, because you'll stay more fluid longer. And doing this, you know, when we started reading ads, I was dyslexic or something. 
Remember mm-hmm. David in the early days? I yeah. was like, I couldn't really read them. And now I've liquefied my ancient brain and now I can <laughs> I just heard, look I at heard her Amy reading. doing her ads and I'm like, this is liquid IV. I go, <laughs> oh, I'm drinking one now. I go, this is this is similar, but it's, it's- I have to say it's fun to do podcast ads as a character though. Because you Yes, can, I told Dana you do that, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, you can just say whatever stupid stuff you want. If it helps you, I this is the way I think about it. I just think of- these small companies that are sponsors are sometimes they're mom and pop and families. I go, they're trying to live the American dream. They're going all out. So I, now I'm not with that attitude. I'm excited that they're supporting our show. I sincerely, I turned down every commercial, every gigantic bring yeah. in the Brinks truck in the nineties. Cause I was, we're supposed to be like Bob Dylan or something. We didn't, we don't have a catalog to sell. That's the problem. You got to sell the catalog later. But, um, Anyway, I, I Dana, I'm going to sum up Dana, uh, uh, Amy with uh, uh, listen to the summary. OK, Dana, and you can jump in. He does this every time he lands it. Go. OK, Do- OK. Dr. Sheila, Dr. Sheila podcast out now. And yes. then she's got her head down listening very contently. She is also it was very fun to talk to you because I don't see you a lot. It's, it's this great time to just shoot the shit with someone. It's funny. And uh, and Dana, you were fine. And um also, oh, we forgot to, uh, you were in Baby Mama. We're not going to talk about that, but it's a great movie also. <laughs> Baby Mama. And, and, she was, movie. and she's in Mean Girls along, along with memes of Mean Girls, which she's in. Memes. That everyone loves it. And Dana, continue, wrap it up. You get half of this. SNL All Star. Uh, just a little milestone. <laughs> the first all girl update feature, all women, sorry, uh, her and Tina. All uh, funny is what book, I call it. She released, yes, please, you, David. Yeah. about her life. The rest of this leg tour, I don't think they That's need- That's the a- tour, I forgot. Yeah, the tour is going to be big. They don't need us to promote them. The tickets are going fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whoops. Mean we can add another show? But it's hard. It sounds easy to go, add another show, and then you go, but it's still Oof. tough. Tough. It's so fun. The audience knows. It's so, so fun. fun to perform for the audience. Everything around it is a little tough. That's the only decision. It's like, shit, give me a good crowd. I love it. But Because what are you going to do? You're in your room for like 14 hours waiting for the show. Maybe go to a matinee if it's easy to get to a theater. Walk out front and sign a bobblehead. They're like, sign this. But we're not complaining to people listening. No. We understand. We're getting no, paid. No, Dane to act is like complaining. Idiots. I'm, I love, I love it. <laughs> We're getting money to act like idiots. <laughs> Thank you, totally. Amy. So uh, very Thank nice you of you so to much. take the time. We love it. And, we uh, love uh, we love talking to you. And the, the best part of this podcast, we just get to spend like a you know a focused hour getting to know you in twenty whatever it is, twenty three. It's a very boring time in America. Nothing's going on. <laughs> so this it's airs good that we have, we can figure out something to talk about. Yeah. Um, but anyway, well, we'll see. I love this is what I use because someone did it to me. See you around campus as if show business is a high school or something. Oh, that's cute. I love that. Pass it along. I love that. And that's better. Yeah, that's I, I love uh spending time with you guys. Thanks so much for asking me. I really have so enjoy listening to everybody on this podcast. And so thanks for letting me be part of it. We appreciate it. I'll see you My in pleasure. science class. See you in science class. <laughs> This has been a podcast presentation of Cadence 13. Please listen, then rate, review, and follow all episodes. Available now for free wherever you get your podcast. No joke, folks. Fly on the Wall has been a presentation of Cadence 13. Executive produced by Dana Carvey and David Spade, Chris Corcoran of Cadence 13, and Charlie Finan of Brillstein Entertainment. The show's lead producer is Greg Holtzman with production and engineering support from Serena Regan and Chris Basil of Cadence 13. 